All around the world, millions of sick, disabled, and dying people are turning in desperation to the supernatural, flocking to spiritual leaders and faith healers, faithfully emptying their wallets in a last-ditch hope for a miraculous cure. But what if I told you that there are certain conditions which most faith healers will avoid like the plague? No pun intended. For example, you will never see a faith healer pray apart conjoined twins. Let's explore more of them though, and discover why they are the bane of faith healers and see what else they will avoid at all cost. Growing up as an evangelical Christian missionary kid, I'm no stranger to the world of faith healing and have even sought it out for myself many times. First as a Christian because I thoroughly believed in it, and then later as an atheist to put faith healing claims to the test. Over the course of the last few months, I've been digging deeper, like super deep into the world of faith healers. And after watching hundreds of hours of revivals, healing crusades, and street healings, and even attending some in person, and through sifting back through decades of newspaper archives lost suits and even talking to people who are allegedly healed miraculously, I've started to see an extremely strong trend emerging. You may have heard the question, why doesn't God heal amputees? If he's able to create a universe from nothing and only needed one day off afterwards, and if Christians are granted miraculous healing powers in order to bring glory and converts to God, wouldn't a little nub extension be child's play to an unfathomably omnipotent deity? Or maybe God just loves starfish more than people. <laughs> And yet, this is part of a larger trend in that it's one of the many ailments which faith healers seem entirely unable to miracle away. Now, I'm gonna dive deeper into the psychology of faith healing in an upcoming video and why it actually does sometimes work in very specific cases, so make sure that you're subscribed for that. But right now, I simply want to juxtapose a list of conditions which faith healers will never be able to cure next to things which faith healers regularly attempt to heal and appear, at least at first, to have have some success with. See if you can spot the trend. Quick graphic content warning though, some of the conditions I'm about to show you may be a tad bit gruesome. Faith healers never seem to be able to cure permanent paralysis, severe brain damage. This mother has been taking her son to these crusades ever since the road accident that left him brain damaged. 11 years ago. Down syndrome, they can't regrow limbs, dwarfism, or gigantism. You will never see a faith healer come up to someone with microcephaly and successfully pray their head bigger. Cleft palates, total blindness, and I'm not just talking about bad eyesight where someone might be legally blind, but is simply visually impaired while still retaining perception of light and color. I'm talking about things like complete retinal detachment, in-stage glaucoma, or missing eyeballs. <laughs> In the authority of the name of Jesus, whose name is above every name named in heaven and earth, I come against this attack on your eyes. Craniosynostosis, conjoined twins, parasitic twins where one conjoined twin stops developing in the womb but remains attached to the other one. Proteus syndrome, giant external visible tumors, EV, webbed fingers and toes, giant moles, giant fur covered moles, or death. Although there's no shortage of pastors who claim to have done so. The dead man began to move. I've seen 37 people raised from the dead. And it's not like a faith healer would ever lie in order to maintain a lavish lifestyle. What? No. On the rare occasion that pastors do attempt to heal people with conditions like these, they fail spectacularly, so they typically try to avoid them. However, all the time, they do claim that they can cure cancer. I curse this cancer. AIDS. You devil of AIDS, come out of them. Arthritis. Arthritis. Just shake off that arthritis. Carpal tunnel. I speak to everyone with carpal tunnel. Be healed now. Back pain. Back pain. Back and back pain. Neck and back pain. Back problems. Lower back pain. It is back. Back. Broken bones. She had a broken toe before she came in this morning. As long as they've already been reset back in place. Asthma. God is gonna heal people from the spirit of asthma. Someone to my right with asthma. You've just been healed. Migraines. Every migraine headache. Migraines. Severe migraines. Nearsightedness slash partial blindness. He's had degeneration in his left eye. You are blind? Completely blind or what? Like, really impaired. I could only see close up. Partial hearing loss, diabetes. 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 Diarrhea. You're not going to have diarrhea any longer. 
Have mercy, Lord. You are not going to have diarrhea any longer. Acid reflux. Acid reflux. Mental disorders which they can blame on demons like depression and anxiety. Poor memory. Your memory. And the Lord said tonight he's going to heal memory. As long as it's not total memory loss. Joint pain. I've had lots of problems with my joints. Snap, crackle, pop. Bam! With his command, a whole new, uh, a uh, whole new leg. Heart issues. Cardiac problems. And ulcers. Ulcers. Now, these are by no means comprehensive lists, but do you notice a trend? Is there anything that stands out as odd to you between these two lists? Well, for starters, why is God only able and willing to cure certain ailments, but not others? I don't want it. And more specifically, why is it that faith healers are so often entirely unwilling to even attempt healing things on one of these lists? And when they try, they fail abysmally. We need every ounce of faith. She's taking these steps of faith. Amazing. This is a done deal. It, it is, it's done. The list on the left contains conditions with very noticeable manifestations like growths and disfigurements. There is a clear physical problem, a noticeable condition which will not resolve on its own. These are not psychosomatic conditions and they're not conditions that come and go like asthma or diarrhea. One of the most blatant examples of pastors avoiding the conditions on the left but opting to heal the ones on the right is when a lady came forward with one missing eye. There's no eye on the right side. And one normal looking eye with allegedly failing eyesight. Since December last year, the remaining eye has lost vision. Guess which one the pastor opted to heal. Cancer has eaten one eye and is eating the other one. They will not remove it again. This problem stops now. Bro. There is a hole the size of Jupiter in this poor woman's head. You claim to channel the power of an omnipotent cosmic deity, and yet you chose to completely ignore that one and focus only on the other one. Oh wait, I know this guy, that's Alf Lacau, the filthy rich South African mega pastor and accused sexual predator who got busted for paying destitute immigrants to pretend that he'd healed them in order to boost attendance and rake in tithes. 33 year old Blaise Nguemelao further reveals his role was to recruit he claims he trained visitors to stage disability during sermons. Pastor, when she went back on Thursday, she got the exact results, HIV negative! I was not positive. I've never been positive. They wanted me to act as if I was positive, and then pastor prayed for me, and I, I get healed so they can attract other people to come to the church. But they promised me money. How much? They said they were going to give me 1.5 every month. HIV Four years. free! Revesai was not his only enlisted actor, there were many others. We were something like uh, three to four teams which were doing the same job. There's a whole backstory behind this guy. You would think that if faith healers claims were true that over the course of thousands of years with billions of people dying and with countless thousands, potentially millions of self-proclaimed supernatural healers practicing their trade, you'd think resurrections and healings of all types would be almost commonplace and there would be no issue medically verifying them. They'd probably even make hospitals obsolete. But in actuality, faith healers fare no better than placebos and their success rates are about the same as natural rates of spontaneous remission or medical misdiagnosis. So the next time that someone claims that they can cure your cancer by praying for you, ask them what their success rate is with microcephaly or conjoined twins. Actually, they probably aren't the most reputable source for, you know, obvious reasons. Instead, dig a little bit deeper, but maybe opt for skepticism as your default starting position. Thank you so much to everyone who is supporting my videos through one-time donations on PayPal or ongoing per video pledges on patreon.com slash holy kool-aid. I'll put links to all the ways you can support my show below. If you appreciate me pushing back against charlatans, con artists, psychics, faith healers, all of that, you can support my work and it really does allow me to do this full time. You can also get holy kool-aid shirts and stuff now at my merch store. I'll put links to all of that stuff below. And as always, dare to be curious, but don't drink the kool-aid.